Hi, I'm Asia, and welcome back to the Strange Days Diaries. Today, I'm gonna to talk all about why mini van life is king. <laughs> If you don't know me or you're new to the channel, I live and travel out of my 1990 Chevy Astro van, so it is definitely a minivan. It's very tiny, and I've been living and traveling out of it for the last four years and have yet to ever wanted to upgrade or want anything better. And in this video, I'm gonna get into the reasons why. In fact, my top 10 reasons why. So if you're looking to get into van life, especially as a solo female or a single person, because I will say right off the bat, I definitely only recommend it for people who are traveling alone. If you are a solo female or you are just a single guy maybe with a dog looking for a van right now or are interested in van life or just simply want to hear my thoughts then these are my top 10 reasons why I think mini van life is best my number one reason is stealth now stealth is a very controversial opinion in the van life community and just in the nomadic community in general a lot of people argue that stealth doesn't even exist that it's not a real thing that it's not possible and then there's other people on the other side of the spectrum that say stealth is definitely possible and I lie more on that side of the spectrum saying that it is possible and I'm living proof of that I've been doing this for the last four years I've stealth camped in a ton of cities a lot of urban cores all up and down the entire west coast many times probably hundreds of times at this point and I've never gotten the knock so I think I can say with confidence that stealth is possible but I attribute the biggest reason why stealth is possible to being in a minivan. There are a couple other factors other than me just being in a minivan as to why being stealthy and stealth camping is possible. And I'd say one of the biggest reasons is my van is in great exterior condition visually. I also always arrive at my stealth camp spot after dark and I leave before sunrise. I never stay in the same spot two nights in a row when I'm stealth camping in urban areas. And I generally follow a very specific set of rules for stealth camping which I think also attributes to why I've never gotten the knock. I could go on and on, but comment below if you actually want a video on all of my tips and tricks and exact steps as to how I find my stealth camping spots, and I'll be happy to make an entire video about it because I think it deserves its own video. Number two being less is more. There's so many pros to being a minimalist, and I've enjoyed becoming more and more of a minimalist as I get older and as I travel and live out of the van. And being in a minivan definitely has forced me and forces a lot of people in minivans to become minimalists and it's actually a really good thing. I feel mentally and physically free not owning and having a ton of stuff in the van and I also again kind of have to be a minimalist and not have a lot because this van can get very crowded with stuff very quickly so having less is always more in my opinion. But with all of that being said I do want to touch on the fact that I know that I'm blessed to not have any kind of significant health issues or problems of any kind that would require medical equipment that is heavy and cumbersome. I'm really lucky and blessed that I don't have to deal with any of that and have to require any of that in my life. And in the same breath, I'm lucky I don't require a lot of headroom. I don't need to stand up in my space and I just generally don't require a lot, but I know that I am lucky and that a lot of people do require a lot more space because they require a lot more things. Number three is that everything is within arm's reach in a minivan. <laughs> I don't think this requires much explanation. It's simply just, I can literally reach everything by sitting on my bed or sitting in one spot in the van. And generally speaking, obviously if I'm sitting inside the van, I can't reach everything under my bed. Like I'd have to get off out of my bed and like totally reach under or get out and open the back doors, that kind of thing. But just generally speaking, like when I'm cooking or getting dressed in the morning, putting makeup on, reading a book, I don't know, pouring myself a glass of coffee or tea, whatever I want to do, I pretty much don't have have to move and I can do it all by sitting on my bed. A lot of people would not consider this a pro, but I do. I like it. I like that it's all within arm's reach and especially on those super unfortunate days when I am sick in the van. It's a huge pro that I don't have to get out of bed. So that's a pro, at least in my opinion. Number four is that I can fit into any parking space. I'm talking parking lot spaces, personal garages. I can fit into any public parking garage. I can fit under any drive through and in and through any drive through any tunnel, under any bridge. It doesn't matter. I can fit. And that's a huge deal when you're traveling, especially full-time, part-time, doesn't matter. If you're living and traveling out of a van, it's really nice not to 
have to think constantly when you're driving under bridges or low overpasses or needing to park in a parking garage because you're in a super urban city environment. It's just nice not having to think constantly like, oh, how tall am I? Will I fit? That kind of thing. Number five is that you probably won't get the cops called on you in a neighborhood. <laughs> this is kind of a funny point that I came up with and I almost didn't include it, but I was like, actually, it's kind of cool, especially being a solo female van lifer. It is nice knowing you're probably not going to get the cops called on you. Now, obviously, this comes with like a lot of reasons why the cops want to get called, but <laughs> this kind of ties into the whole stealth thing. I follow a lot of rules when I'm stealth camping, but the biggest reason why I put this point in is I have friends in a lot of different cities up and down the West Coast, and every now and then I get invited to house parties, and it's nice being able to drive to the party, park out in front of their house, and not have to worry necessarily about how much I'm drinking at the party because my home is literally just outside their front doorstep, and I can just go out to the van and sleep in my literal home after I'm done hanging out with all my friends at the party instead of having to call an Uber because I've been drinking to go home. It's just a small little niche thing. It's just nice to know that I can do that. The cops probably aren't gonna get called on me because I'm super quiet. I'm in a self-contained vehicle, meaning I don't have to have the back or side doors open to cook or get anything. It's all self-contained within my van and I always leave before the sun rises. I guess this really is tied in with stealth, but I just wanted to throw that out there that being in a minivan really minimizes your chances of getting the cops call on you. Again, definitely doesn't guarantee, but it helps a little bit. Number six, better gas mileage. This is just cut and dry. Generally speaking, a minivan gets much better gas mileage than an RV, full-size van, a sprinter, that kind of thing. So that's always really, really nice. Number seven, anyone can drive my van because it's a minivan. I put this in here because of one specific story. Actually, last year, I had a chance to go to New York City. I didn't have the funds to drive there and I was in San Francisco at the time and I had my van parked on the street in San Francisco. Definitely not downtown San Francisco, don't worry about that, but it was in a safe spot in San Francisco and a couple of my friends knew the location of my van and one of my friends actually had a spare key to my van in case for whatever reason they needed to move my van, they could. And my friend who had my spare key for the van, she had never driven my van before, but she had no worries about hopping in and just driving the van away if need be because it's a small minivan. It's super simple. It's not a huge rig. I have found that I have a lot of friends and I've just talked to people who do worry or like think that maybe they can't drive a bigger rig. Like it's a little scary to them possibly. So it's really nice driving a rig that in the case of an emergency or whatever the case may be, pretty much anyone could hop in and drive it. And that's actually a really great pro to having a minivan. Number eight is that a small little book light can easily light up the entire interior of your van at night. I touched on this in my top 10 van life essentials for solo female van lifers. If you didn't watch that video and you're interested, it will be linked below. But basically a tiny little LED book light can quite literally be enough light to light up the entire inside of my van at night. And this is great for stealth reasons. This is also great for physical room reasons like storing a huge lamp versus a tiny little book light is awesome. And there's just a lot of reasons why this is great. So I'm not gonna go super in depth about this, but if you're interested and wanna go into more depth, definitely check out the video linked below. Number nine, we're almost at the end, but number nine is that you do not need to register a minivan as an RV or a motorhome when it comes to insurance. Now I'm not super versed on this topic because I drive in a minivan, so I just have regular car insurance, but I have made a couple friends who travel in buses or large sprinter vans or just big RVs, motorhomes, that kind of thing. And they all obviously need RV or motorhome insurance for that rig. And that can become not only pretty expensive, but come with a lot of extra rules and laws and regulations that they have to follow since it's an RV, or I should say, since it's technically an RV. Every state is different as to if you need to register your van as an RV for insurance purposes. And again, I'm not super well versed because I don't have to do it, but that's just something to consider and look into if you're looking to get into this and are considering minivan van life. Number 10, I can park next to a bigger rig at night for a good wind block. This is so niche and kind of funny, but whenever I caravan with family or friends that travel in large rigs or vans, they're almost always bigger than mine because I drive a tiny old Astro van. And there has been moments during travels where it's super windy at night. And if you've ever traveled in a van or you are a van lifer, you know the trials and tribulations that come with sleeping at night in 
a windstorm, it's kind of impossible because your rig is just moving around constantly making noise and it's really annoying. But if you're caravanning with someone else, which obviously isn't always the case, but if you are, then you can park strategically next to them to have a bit of a wind block. And that's kind of only possible if you're in a minivan. So hey, that's really nice. And one more point I really wanted to put in this video, a little bonus point, if you will, is that in my opinion, traveling out of a minivan is just overall so much cuter and unique than a full-size van or RV. And that's just my opinion, obviously. I think some RVs and old school, like full-size vans are super cool. I mean, just so aesthetically awesome. Like, don't get me wrong. I think big, cool, like 70s vans are so, so sick. But anyways, I just think traveling and being in a minivan is so cool and unique because not a lot of people are doing it. There's obviously reasons why not a lot of people are doing it, but it's so fun going to van expos or van meetups and rolling up in my little tiny Astro van is hardly anyone is traveling in a tiny minivan. So it's fun showing up in my tiny little car, but everything is not all butterflies and rainbows when it comes to minivan van life trust me. There's pros and cons to absolutely everything, especially when it comes to van life. And I do want to get into my top 10 most annoying things about traveling and living out of a minivan. So make sure and subscribe because my next video will be all about my top 10 most annoying things about traveling in a minivan and specifically about traveling in an Astro van. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that next video. Comment down below if there were any points that resonated with you or any points you think I missed. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video.